What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we're taking a look at uh, 2023 CCKS uh, Halloween Hattie. Super cool knife from Shirogorov. Um, my understanding is on this one, uh, the timing um, just didn't quite line up, so it kind of became a show knife from Shirogorov as, uh, you know, a week or two or ten days or whatever down from Halloween, uh, it was kind of released. Uh, it's got a couple of real cool features on it, including the bead, the fact that it's actually all glow-in-the-dark as well, uh, which I have put this knife, this one right here, um, I charged it up with a light and took a picture of it to show you because it's kind of hard to show on video, um, for me anyway, due to my complete lack of uh, photography skill. So I will overlay that at some point in the video to show you what it looks like when it's all charged up. But uh, we're going to go over this knife today in lots of detail, talk about it, look at it, play with it, and uh, kind of compare it to a bunch of other models. As a reminder, guys, a lot of the knives that I feature on this channel are available on my website, bladezilla.ca, which I happen to have right here in my hand. There's the website, got a bunch of stuff up, just added some Chavez, a bunch of new Shirogorovs, and I'm always adding stuff to it, so check that out, bladezilla.ca, and uh, follow me on Instagram, I've got that down below, uh, direct link, and obviously you're following me on YouTube, so there you go. Pretty simple, nice little shout out. Um, I get asked all the time what my, uh, what my uh, website is, surprisingly, but uh, you know, bladezilla.ca, so there you go. Um, in terms of this knife itself, what do you guys think? Do you see more orange in it, or do you see a little red? Um, I had just up to maybe two days ago, maybe, I had a red Hattie available to show. And uh, that one went out the door already. So I apologize, but I do have some blue. Um, I do have a bunch of black ones that just came out, as well as some white. Um, I don't know if I'm going to actually do a comparison, because I think those ones are all boxed up and away. And uh, for sale on the site, but I've got a, a blue and a black here in my own collection that I can show. So, um, just because they're available and I'm lazy. So, there you go. Let's do some measurements, let's take a look at it, and uh, I guess let's kind of get started on this. So, what do we got? Should be 4 inch blade, 3.875, I think, is what they're saying, sharpened. But I always just say it's 4 inch blade, 8 and 5 eighths OAL overall length, handle should be 4 and 3 quarters, there we go. We've got, I believe, titanium hardware, looks beautiful, flipper tab, looks real nice actually. Nice back spacer filled in. I love the Hattie. It's uh, and here's the other thing too with it with this particular one the the ear was it iridescence or whatever the, the glow in the dark portion of it. You'll actually see it later uh, when I do show you, which will be probably pretty quick. Um, it's actually like right inside the carbon as well. It's not just on the external scale, which is like dreamy and you get lost in it as I roll the light around here, but it's actually in the sides as well, which looks kind of cool. And on the back panel, we have the same carbon fiber which you kind of, hopefully as you're looking here, you can see how the light kind of changes it around and just makes it look real, real nice. Um, I did say earlier M390, which is their high-end production kind of standard, I guess, they're doing now. And you can see that on the side of the blade, which uh, is kind of quickly becoming their, their norm. And I'll try to get some fingerprints off this, some oil, uh, but hopefully you can see that there. There you go. M390. Beautiful milling up top as well. Oh. You know, the uh, I was having a conversation just the other day, and uh, you know, from Sure Goroff's like I guess entry level production knives into their high end production knives, there's a real big step I find that uh, like the detail on the clip, for example, and the side milling portions here, and then up top here, it's just done so well. Like the uh, the lock bar itself, if you look down here, it's all micro milled and machined in there. It's just gorgeous. And if you ever took this clip off and you looked underneath it too, looking up, there's an Easter egg that's beautiful as well. 
And the design is not just on the titanium, but it's actually on the, on the carbon as well. Found throughout the same pattern on both sides to match. Um, let's show a couple other hatties here that are just available. So I've got my blue, which is a M390. Same thing, right? And remember the angle, the camera's going to start appearing bigger as I get closer. And I've got my CCKS black. Um, the only difference really between, I've got some black ones on the site now, is that this one is uh, an older CCKS. So it's got S90V and this kind of backspacer that's kind of copper, um, bronze or whatever, if it wants to ever focus. You can kind of see that. It's just a different color, but otherwise the scale's like identical to the ones that are on the site. And I'm going to have to do a video on that at some point because I don't think I've gotten around to it. There's just too many knives right now. And I've done, I think, videos on the red hattie, the blue hattie, and the white. So there's three. So I'll add the black to it at some point. But there's your three, um, which is, is kind of a real nice collection, I think. And then you add a white to it, and it just, it's all four. They're all the same in terms of action. Multi-row bearings, carbon handle, tie frame, beautiful knives. Now, if we want to look at some other comparisons, why don't we do that? We can do, uh, let's do some F95s, which is essentially the same knife, just the tie front show scale. So there's an F95. Uh, we can look at some quantums as well. Uh, let's do my monkey edge frag quantum, single row bearing on this one. Uh, but that's a quantum versus essentially an F95 layout on the Hattie, right? More of a Persian kind of sweep look to it, which uh, a lot of people like, myself included. But I'd say the main difference between them is actually the flipper tab location. Because if you look at the quantum, it's right up top here, kind of built into the frame. Which is, uh, some people love it, some people don't like it. I love both. But my preference is the F95, just because it kind of pulls the tab back just ever so slightly. But available in a number of different configurations, tons of which I have right here. And I'll show you that F95 one more time and how it, the tabs just pull back just a little bit. And I just find that you find it a little easier, just from my perspective. Very similar though. Very, very similar. Uh, I will now overlay this knife, kind of sitting in the dark, with a uh, little uh, fluorescence to it to kind of show you what that looks like in the in the quote glow in the dark feature, which is great. You know, if uh, if you want to cut things in the dark, you're not going to lose your knife. Uh, I don't know who's doing that, but uh, you know, it's just a cool little feature. So overlay that. Uh, in terms of other knives in the Shiro lineup that we always like to see. Um, why don't we go through a couple of them here. Uh, let's do our F95 NL, which is essentially the same knife that I just showed you. We have, uh, we could do an RJ Martin. I've got a couple here. So there's your RJ. This one is on the site right now. Uh, Maroon Micarta. Beautiful knife. I've got a Quantum Bronze, which will be coming up here. As you can see, the site's kind of prepped for it. I think it was on the homepage there. So there's the Quantum Bronze. I love that knife. Put this guy away. We've got our... Yeah, we could do a couple more here. Why not? There's our Shira Goroff Sinkovich Bio. I think that one is the dark, uh, which is a beautiful knife. Love that one as well. We've got our F95 CD Turtle, which uh, for all intents and purposes, once again, same knife, just a different kind of layout to them in that carbon fiber front, which I love. And then uh, a couple others I'll go through real quick. So the Tom Mayo Dr. Death, beautiful knife. Love that one. The sure go off Stellar, which is a little bit smaller as well. Our F95 Silk Slim, which uh, 
That's another gorgeous knife, my god. But built on the F95 platform, just thinner, a little bit more machining. And finally, we'll do our Neon NL, which, depending on where I place this guy, will appear either pretty big or bug out sized. And that's, I think, more representative when we look at it kind of like this. It's, uh, it's a smaller knife, and it should be and appear quite a bit smaller. But there's your, there's your sure core off kind of general layout. And there's some, you know, other ones like uh, the Quantiums. We could probably show that as well, right? Kind of the entry level price point for a couple other ones. And uh, I'm not going to go through all the colors, but similar multi row bearings, lightweight, uh, but Chromax or M390. Now, now that we've kind of talked about it, let's take a look a little closer. So we've obviously got carbon fiber front in that reflective glow-in-the-dark color. We've got titanium hardware. We've got a nice beautiful flipper tab. Some inlaid milling, which is uh, not inlaid milling, milling, micro milling on both the carbon scale and the, and the lock bar. We've got jimping that should match the max spacer. Let's take a look at that. So, it's, you know, functional, but it's, uh, in my opinion, pretty Pretty low, smooth jimping on the blade, which the pattern matches that backspacer. We've got some paracord on the back that's tied in a Shirgoroff knot with a custom bead, a little Halloween pumpkin. If I want to focus on that, it probably helps show it a little better. But there's your Shirgoroff pumpkin. So, like I said, it was, uh, my understanding is this knife was supposed to come out for uh, just prior to Halloween, and uh, it didn't. So, that's why we got a pumpkin. There's not too many Halloween special editions, and uh, my understanding is that there's 50 of these made. Um, I don't know if they're going to reach the, uh, the websites or not, uh, because they are special editions that were sold at CCKS 2023. And uh, time will tell how many of these are going to be floating around following the shows. Um, but my understanding is they're they're pretty hot. You know, there's not too many of them left. So um, that's pretty cool. You got the Shiro Ball Knot, which is awesome. And then just the standard little kind of bit that they do on the back of it. So super, super cool bead. And if you guys remember, um, you know, any of the special editions, these do not cut these beads off because... People will pay big, big bucks for these, and uh, as soon as you cut this knot off, you're probably losing a few hundred dollars on the overall price of the knife. It's just, it's not worth it. You know, they, people people will buy this, I'm telling you right now, people will buy this knife, untie the bead, collect it, and sell the knife. Because, you know, if there's only 50 of these, they're highly collectible. So if you are going to remove it, just untie it. There's nothing wrong with that. Untie it. Tuck it away nicely, but don't cut that cord, the paracord off. And uh, another thing which I like is the ends. They're actually, uh, I don't know if they're waxed or burned. They look burned and waxed? I don't know. They look burned, melted, to kind of tie that off, which is a nice little feature. That they did that. It's probably done by hand. So there's your Shiro pumpkin. I love that bead. Um, I've got a couple beads on the website as well. Actually, I've got a few of them that aren't on the website, but I've got a 2023 radiator bead, which is uh, up now. And uh, following this video, which should come out on the 13th, I think, uh, yeah, it should come out on the 13th. Um, I should have a couple more beads added very, very soon that I don't think are up yet. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. We've got a titanium backspacer, which uh, has a bit of a stone wash to it, which is nice. Which I said earlier matched the pattern on the jimping, which I always love. We've got skeletonization on the inside of the titanium side of the uh, frame. Uh, whereas the carbon side, there shouldn't be any. I haven't actually looked, I'm just kind of going off memory. Yeah, it's, it's uh, nothing going on on the carbon side. but. The, uh, there you go, there's the tie side, it has the typical, I guess, kind of Shiroff S milling to it. It's skeletonized like crazy, which makes this uh, typically a full ounce lighter than an F95. Which uh, I think, if I remember correctly, 
you know, I think these guys were weighing in at like three, six. Does that sound right, guys? Three, four, three, six. We'll get a weight on it here. <clears throat> Let's take a look. 4-2, that doesn't seem right, does it? Maybe I am. Maybe I'm off. 4.2, okay. Am I crazy or is that? I thought it was in the threes for some reason. Let's just take an F95 here. 4.7, so half an ounce. So maybe that's where I'm going with that. 4.7. Oh, that's right, there is the bead on there, I forget, and the rope. That could add a little bit. 4.2, because in my head I had around 4 ounces, but actually in my head I had high 3s, but okay, there you go. I always forget there is a little bit extra with that bead, which isn't much, but it is something. Right? Fit in hand, it's beautiful, it's just like all the other Hatties, you know, everything's done well. The jimping's usable, you've got... Um, some milling around the flipper tab for when it opens. As you can see here, as you push this back, there's room for it, for your finger to kind of just rest and not get pinched or caught on anything, which is a nice touch. Nice tolerances as well. Everything's just done so smooth. We have a Obviously, uh, an over travel stop built into the uh, metal lock bar insert. Now it is now attached with a Torx uh, externally, whereas some of the new ones, and I'll show you the, uh, just for reference, I'll grab that turtle again. Also known as my favorite knife of all time. Um, you can see how they've actually removed that externally um, positioned and they've mounted it now internally. So that is a nice little feature to hide it a little bit. But uh, whereas on the F95, Silk Slim, I believe, they were doing it external as well, but using a custom bit. If you can see that. So, pretty cool. So they're using Torx here, obviously. Now, with, with the over travel stop, I always try to say this, that uh, not only does it, uh, you know, account for a, a wear part, in terms of, you know, it will wear out and, re and replacement is possible over time. Or if there's an issue with uh, the lockup, you can get that adjusted, right? Because it is, it is metal. Uh, but I will also say this. You're, you're fine-tuning the materials between the titanium frame and whatever blade it is. In this case, M390. I don't actually know what that metal lock bar insert is made of. Um, somebody mentioned it in the comment one time, they said, oh, typically Sheergraph uses X, and it's probably on their website in their export documents, but, um, or on my computer, and anyway, um, it's probably on there somewhere, um, it's probably a standard steel for a number of blades, I would assume. The other thing here that I love about that lock bar, um, is as I rotate the knife here, and I roll this puppy up, well, it sticks up. And you see the contouring on the carbon fiber? It's just made for your finger to find so smooth. It's, uh, it's elevated just a little bit. I don't know if you can kind of see that profile from the camera itself, but it is elevated just a little bit. And uh, it's just so easy to find. It's just ergonomically perfect to lock, unlock, manipulate, etc. Look at that detent. Now I have heard some Hatties, uh, and I have had one of them come through, that the uh, detent was a little stiffer than the others, not by much, um, but you do notice it. This is this is medium and pretty standard for a lot of them. Uh, they will break in obviously over time as you use them, the multi-row bearings, etc. They all It all wears in, so don't be surprised out of the box if some of them feel a little stiff and then just kind of break in nice and smooth. Uh, and that's just, you know, the hand-built nature of any knife and the tolerances that, you know, human error essentially puts into some of these things. Uh, case in point would actually be the grinds. A lot of the, uh, well, all these are hand-grind knives. So you will typically see sometimes some very, very minute little details on them. I have seen a few. 
And uh, the best way that I've found to see the difference is actually looking at um, the tolerances between the end of the blade and the back spacer. That gap changes on some of them. Very, very little. But if you're looking at it with a, a macro lens, you'll notice that uh, changes ever so slightly. Also, the tolerance there is just not much. Such a good little detail. Um, Shiro's are all, you know, out of the box. They're going to be dead center uh, because it's a sure go off. The, the QC control on these is just some of the best available, in my opinion which I love, and that uh, was originally why I went down the Shirgoroff rabbit hole, and I'm now very poor. Because they're just honestly, uh, you know, jokes aside, they're honestly unbelievable. Unbelievable knives. Some of the best. Some of the best. Now, I have noticed ever since they also kind of went away from, see how the lock bar bend is external? On some of the older ones, they made that internal, and I'll actually go back to my Silk Slim, because I think that was one of them. Uh, no, it's not. Of course it's not. Why would it be? Because I'm in the middle of a video, right? Um, let's go to that uh, Dr. Death. That's uh, kind of my go-to. There we go. So, see how the lock bar here is... Uh, there you go. They've, they've cut it internally. So... I find when they do it external, and, that, and this is just me, there's no method to my madness, I just find that when it's, uh, that milling is external versus internal, it feels a little uh, easier to manip manip manipulate. And I think my F95, yeah, there we go, there's one there, that, that's the one I was thinking of. This old CD, see how it, uh, same thing? So there you go. And then on the... Dr. Death, that's, uh, they changed that on the, in the third run, and they put it on the uh, outside. And that's when I noticed, this is when I noticed it specifically, is when all of a sudden manipulating it just felt that much more natural. So, um, yeah, maybe that's something they did five years ago or so. But uh, I, really, I really enjoy it like this. The purists will say, well, that's a bit of a hole here, and I wish... I wish it was smoother, and then the, then the other side of the argument is, well, now it's below your clip, and uh, you have somewhere for your jeans or your pants or your skirt or your astronaut spacesuit to clip into, and uh, it doesn't get balled up under there, and it just use, allows that clip to be manipulated a little, e a little easier if you're going to Mars with this thing. Um, another thing. We look at the clip. A couple things. What do we notice? What do we notice? I think it'd be easy if uh, if Shiro, um, it'd be a lot easier if they didn't put that bulge in there and then they didn't mill this clip with kind of a single-sided, and I'm going to rotate that in so I don't cut myself. You see the clip, how it angles onto the frame on this side? It'd be a lot easier to put less milling into that clip, get rid of this, because that would be another cost savings, I think, because it's easier to do the other way around. So, it's the details they do that they don't have to do, right? That just make this so special. And, and I'll say this too, like that, the clip, it's just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. It angles itself on one side into the frame itself instead of the lock bar, which I think I'll try to show. See how it's got a single-sided little leg on it, it's not symmetrical, it leans onto that side of the frame, which is cool. So in hand, in hand when you're holding the knife, your palm is going to be pushing on the clip, or your fingers are going to be pushing on the clip before you launch it. I always like to kind of just put a couple on there when I hold it like that, and then that way you know when you're pushing the blade out, it's not an issue. Whereas if you're holding the frame, and I'll show this, say my fingers on the lock bar like that, it won't come out. I'm trying right now. But you move that finger over onto the pocket clip, comes out first try. It's just a detail they, they don't have to do, but it just makes it so much more flickable. Uh, another thing with the Hattie, and all of them, so they're on, uh, well not all of them, 
Uh, this one's on multi-row bearings, which think of it as kind of three bearings and a pinwheel in a circle sitting down in a little cage. A little bloop, 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 bloop. And uh, I was asked this the other day as well, like, are they hard to rebuild? Are they hard to service? And the way they actually build these, it's not like you have to take the two halves and sandwich the blade and each side has like inlaid bearing holes or whatever slots. They actually build it so it's kind of like, like frame up. You put the slap the frame down, put your track in, put your bearings, put your blade on top of that. It'll have an indent for the next track. Put the bearings in, put the handle on. You don't have to sandwich anything. It's all just really easily put together and well thought out. The couple details that are not well thought out, in my opinion, that I think are just cost measures more than anything, is I'm, I've always said this, I'm not a big fan of having anything on the blade. So the Sheargroff Bear and the M390, they're lasered onto the blade, okay? Well, that's also where you do a lot of your slicing. So at some point, those are gonna get in the way, I would imagine, but let's be realists here. I don't know who's cutting right there on the blade. You know, you're probably using center point up, you're probably using this area primarily. So that's why they park it back there. Is it a big deal? No, not at all. But is it something you're allowed to, to uh, complain about? Of course. These are all things you're allowed to do. It's not a big deal. Uh, but on a, you know, a 1200 list table knife, US, um, yeah, you're allowed to complain about it. Because that's what we do. We're complainers by nature. We're complainers with knives. You should be afraid of us. Quietly, though. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, another thing that they don't have to do on the inlay on the back here is actually extend it underneath the clip. So they've done that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it, oh yeah, you can. Um, the inlay actually goes underneath the clip. And to me, that's a nice little talking point because um, if, you were to, if you were to cut this off or, or put something underneath and not connect the two, as you're putting jeans in and out of here, or as I said earlier, a spacesuit, which made no sense, but if you're putting things in and out of here, you're gonna eventually peel off something under the clip. So by making that one piece, it just adds to the overall just uh, well doneness, I suppose, and finished quality of the knife. Uh, another point is you see how on the carbon scale um, we obviously have that built-in spot for the line here built into the back spacer. So on the front show scale, there's no holes going through it. And I always show that on the Stellar in how they've done their lanyard hole. Well, it's it's a hole in the frame that goes right through the knife, both uh, not allowing you to put the actual knife up and fill that space because you need the dead space for the paracord to go through or leather or whatever. Um, but it's a hole there and some people like that, some people don't. I think it's kind of irrelevant in a lot of ways. But uh, what Shiro does is they build it into that backspacer, which is very smart because now you don't have a weird sight line to it and it just sits in there so nicely and if you don't have a bead in there, it looks finished. It, uh, it's just, it's pleasant to the eyes in my opinion. So nice, nice little touches, but the flipper tab, everything seems to be, you know, beautifully done. Multi-row bearings, silky smooth, uh, no issues. And I, and it's not supposed to be a difference in terms of action because let's be honest, if I park this at any point, it will hold that blade weight and until I just give it a little nudge. Um, the single row bearing versions of, of some of their knives are just as smooth and just as, as beautiful, but I find the actual difference is when you know, the, the, the force you're putting through the, the knife side to side, it spreads that load out over more surface area on the blade versus a single ball in terms of depth, which when you put three little ball bearings in a row, it just increases the, the side load you can put on it before there's going to be any kind of problems. So well done, well thought out knife. Um, the tooling itself. Yes, they're, uh, they look like screwdrivers, and you can certainly get away with using screwdrivers to open this. That's not a problem, but don't. Get the tool, you're going to mar it up. Uh, or, if you don't, use a penny. Sorry, I just burped. Use a penny, uh, because it's a softer metal than the titanium, and the penny itself will damage before you damage this. So that's, uh, that's my little point, I suppose you could say. Use a penny, or even a plastic credit card. Fold it over on itself, and it'll be super easy to open those guys up. 
Um, also, note from the factory, um, both are on this side. Some people, for some reason, try to flip this one. I've seen that before. And uh, end up, so they, they rotate this around, and then they end up kind of rubbing the clip on the back if they put it in backwards. Because if you look straight down at it, there's actually not clearance for it. Or if there is, it's ever so slight. So if you have a bit that's the same width as that bolt head, you'll end up kind of rubbing on that uh, clip over time. It just as not as an ideal. Um, however, the uh, the clip itself, some of them they used to actually put a bolt through the top of it as well, the pocket clip, but they actually did it internally, which is nice. So on the inside of the frame, there is a tiny little screw, and I don't know if I, you can see that. Maybe you can. There's a tiny little screw on the inside that goes out into the clip to kind of give you that little bit of a relief in your OCD-ness, which is nice. It's a well done knife, guys. It's a really well done knife. And the fact that it glows in the dark, I think, is just so cool. The fact that there's 50 makes it a unique story. And the fact that it's a Halloween special is going to make your Instagram posts uh, your TikToks, your your uh, creativity soar next Halloween when you stick this glow-in-the-dark knife into a pumpkin and uh, get all those cool likes. I think it's just, uh, you know, it's cool that Shiro's doing something for Halloween because it's just not everyone's doing it and uh, it just looks cool. You know, it's unique. You know, we, we're all collectors, we're all hobbyists first and foremost and anytime you have a seasonal knife i think it's just cool right like you pull this guy out around the office in october in the fall or maybe you're whatever it's just it's cool right fits your pumpkin spice latte let's not deny it we all like them okay is it lame that we like them of course it is but i like them i like my psls just as much as the next guy well now that i were uh kind of just treading water here i think that's where i'm gonna wrap this guy up Appreciate you guys taking a look at the uh, Sugar Off 2023 Hattie Halloween, uh, I think is what it's called. It could be Halloween Hattie, it could be Hattie or whatever. Uh, glow in the dark Hattie, red scales, are they orange, are they red? Nobody knows. But they glow in the dark, looks badass, it's got a cool bead. And uh, for all intents and purposes, it is an absolute home run. So there you go. Appreciate you guys stopping by. Check out the website, bladezilla.ca, and uh, if you have any questions, leave them below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And until next time, I will catch you around. Peace, guys.